So I wanted to take this opportunity to create a kind of video blog of the evolution of education for life. Um, this system actually did begin in a chicken coop. Um, it's now six elementary schools, a high school and a college. And uh, it's fun to go back to those early days, not just for the stories though, because I also wanted to just kind of highlight some of the key incidents that help shape education for life, and especially for me to help me understand its, uh, its depth. This uh, approach was started in India um, many, many years ago. It's based on the deepest aspects of Indian philosophy, the Vedas, and it's brand new to the United States, so it took a lot of uh, adaptation. So this is 1972, the first year we had the school. Um, I had graduated from Berkeley and had got a teaching credential and uh, moved up to the Ananda community um, to help with their children. And they wanted a school based on this approach, education for life, but it wasn't well mapped out at that point. And so I was kind of experimenting with different things and I, I guess the first thing that came to me was, yeah, if you're going to have a spiritually based school, it's, you want it to be uplifting, you wanted to uh, help children understand higher values. And so I thought, well, the thing that makes the most sense to me was to uh, tell them the story of the, of the Ramayana. For those of you who don't know the Ramayana, it's uh, one of the Indian classics, epics, um, has a very deep uh, philosophical message, but in a very easy to understand uh, story form that children can appreciate. This time there were the six original children in the school. They were aged four through eight years old. Um, we had spent a, few, oh, a while, a few days, renovating our, our building with a chicken coop so that we could have a space for, for the children. And um, I had a book of the Ramayana and I would take it home and I would look, read a chapter to myself, take some notes so I could be prepared to come back the next morning and tell the stories. So I uh, was sharing and they were very, of course, children love stories, especially that age children, and they were very enthusiastic, very attentive. So it was one, maybe one of the first successful experiences we had in the school. Um, so I was telling the story and uh, we came to a part where one of the characters, his name is Hanuman, he has these uh, magical powers and he could, one of the things he could do is he could fly through the sky. And so um, the story said that Hanuman was flying through the air like a meteor. And whenever I came up to a word that I wasn't sure the kids understood, I would stop the story and I'd say, well, you know, anybody know what that means? So I stopped at this point and I said, okay, who has any idea what the word meteor means? And uh, somebody raised their hand and I, I said, okay, what is it? What's a meteor? And I said, well, a meteor is somebody that eats hamburgers, <laughs> which makes sense in the context that all these kids were vegetarians. And so the whole idea of eating meat was unusual to them anyway. So a meteor was kind of, yeah, it's flying through the sky like a meteor. So you, somebody going with a big hamburger in his hand. But so I tried to keep from laughing too hard and um, explain no meteor something else. And um, aren't children sweet and um, kind of naive? Um, so we continue with the story. Uh, another five minutes and we got to this point where the main character, Rama, is hiking through the forest. And it says, Rama came across this man who was sitting in Samadhi. And Samadhi is a very uh, special term in yoga. It tends, stands for, the, for a deep state of consciousness. And um, I knew that the kids didn't know that one, right? Because kids don't know those things. So I stopped and I said, okay, now we got another new word, uh, Samadhi. Okay, so who thinks they can know what the word Samadhi means? And so, the littlest uh, student, she's only four years old, her name was Nicole, and she raised her hand. And so I thought, well, that's really going to be a really fun answer to get a definition of samadhi from a four-year-old. And so I said, okay, what's it mean, Nicole? And she said, she looked at me, and she's very, very calm, very poised. And she says, samadhi is when someone comes up to you, and you're sitting there very still, and they say, Nicole, Nicole and there's nobody there to answer. And I just kind of held my breath. <laughs> it was like, oh my gosh, she really understands it. She has it, and she said it in her own words. <laughs> and I just, 
you know, going from chuckling at children's kind of their the fun of their not understanding life on a very deep level to understand realizing. And here's the point for the evolution of education for life and my evolution as a teacher was that I wasn't really teaching children. I was teaching souls. And these souls were that I was working with were in young bodies. They were only their bodies were four to eight years old. But that there was a knowledge inside of them that was far beyond that. And as a teacher, I needed to come in every day and tr as try as best I could to work with them with that sense of respect that they I didn't not to condescend to them or look down on them and just kind of assume that they were ignorant, but to say, no, these are these are wonderful souls that I'm working with and I need to appreciate them and give them, offer them that respect uh, that they deserve. Um, and so it, it changed me as a teacher um, because I, of course, in my own education, I've been uh, many different situations, but often uh, as a student, I didn't feel respected. The teachers seem, seemed to talk down and to uh, assume that they knew everything and that I didn't know anything. As a, and so it helped me to shift to say, no, whenever I go in the classroom, uh, my job is to you know, organize activities, present things, but always to be open to uh, the suggestions of the children and to make use of them in uh, developing uh, what we're going to do in the classroom.